it is very discouraging. It is extremely discouraging because I think that is an indictment to both the government as well as the committee. Because in his statement, the chairman of the committee, Honorable Peter Daka, has indicated that there has been challenges to audit these parastatals owing to certain reasons. And one of them is the issue of ministers not appointing boards and also the absence of financial statements, which to me in a business environment can only be termed as deliberate. Mr. Speaker, at the point when PF took over government in 2011, they re-established what was INDECO then, I think, or ZIMCO, the IDC. And the Industrial Development Corporation is the one that is overseeing the performance of all these parastatal bodies. So one was, wants to ask a question. What has been the function of the IDC in supervising and making sure that accountability happens in these parastatals? The chairman of the committee also indicates that this whole act destroys the very essence of the function of parliament, that being the oversight function on the executive. So to me, this is a report just full of lamentation and an, an indictment to the committee, because the committee system is the heart and soul of any parliament. So after this report, then what? What is the remedy for such lamentations? where we are told the ministers must now be given a time frame within which to constitute these boards. Time frame uh, uh, given by who? It means that there's some element of laxity or neglect on the part of the ministers to appoint these boards so that these particular um, parastatal bodies can function accordingly. So the, as the government comes back in, they must answer to these um, um, uh, issues that the committee brings out. Why are ministers failing to appoint boards? Is it deliberate? Is it indolence? Is it uh, laziness? Or is it a, a way of making sure that accountability does not happen? M Mr. Speaker, the seconder also speaks about the issue of statutory uh, payments and requirements to statutory bodies. Example given NAPSA, workman's compensation, uh, and so on and so forth. If a government-operated business can fail to meet these statutory payments, what more a commercial business that is operating under an, an economy that is very difficult to, to operate in? It means that the whole business, uh, you know, circuit becomes dislocated. And then the parastatal bodies must be the ones that must operate their business as shining examples of how possible it is to meet these statutory payments to NAPSA, to the workman's compensation, as an example. So to me, this report does not bring out any hope. And the, the earlier we realize that we need to button up this by doing the very basic things, appointing a board. I think that's basic. All you need is to go and look at people's competences, those people who you think are, are, are skillfully or qualified to run the businesses of government, then you are beginning to make the first step in getting it right. In as far as I'm concerned, this report may just go back in the shelf and start gathering dust, and we want to hear what the, the government's position in terms of action taken in the next uh, parliament, for those who will be lucky to come back here, to see whether we have a serious government who have responded to these issues or not. With those few remarks, Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank you for the opportunity. Honorable Member 